Hello and welcome to part two of our special Neighborhood Nature with our guest botanist Bea. In part two we are going to be talking about wildflowers and this is a four-part series and you can find all four videos on our YouTube page. And without further ado, to Bea, let's talk about wildflowers. Okay, well um, wildflowers are part of the largest plant group, um, the uh, angiosperms, which are the flowering plants that we're all familiar with. Um, they tend to be herbaceous, so they have green, uh, soft stems, and they die back every winter and then grow back in the spring. Um, there's a huge amount of diversity, um, and there's lots of uh, different wildflowers that you can find. Some common ones are often in the aster group, the asteraceae or asteraceae. Uh, these include sunflowers, or um, dandelions even, or um, uh, daisies. Um, and their flowers are actually not flowers, but a collection of flowers called an inflorescence. Um, this one's specifically called the capitulum. And they, um, each little petal that you see is actually an individual flower. And then it forms this huge um, collection of flowers that each serve a different role. Some of them produce pollen and then some of them turn into seeds. Sunflowers fall under that? Yeah, sunflowers are in that category. So okay. if you have any in your backyard, you can look. And the yellow flowers on the margin are, um, I think those are the pollen-producing ones. Um, they're like a little tube flower, a little tiny uh, anther sticking out. And then the ones on the inside obviously turn or, uh, produce the seeds when they get pollinated. Um, yeah, so sunflowers and then even dandelions, um, they just produce seeds in a different way that have a little bit of fluff on the end so that they can carry them away. Um, the whole point of a flower is to attract pollinators, so that's why they're often quite bright and colorful. Um, then the different colors can often tell you what kind of pollinator that they'll be pollinated by. But often tube-shaped flowers are for hummingbirds, whereas uh, large flowers with a flat surface are for bees. All of these wildflowers that we're seeing, are these wildflowers mm -hmm. that we can generally see around St. Albert, the Edmonton area? Yeah, so some of them in the video are from our area. So um, we live in the Parkland Ecotone, um, which is a transition between the prairies in the south and the boreal forest up, nor up north. And so um, you can find lots of meadows and also uh, areas of um, like aspen or poplar trees. Um, and so some of the ones that are in here that I put in, um, there's wild raspberry and wild strawberry. Um, and they are edible. They're absolutely delicious. Um, you can usually identify the strawberries because they have a three-part leaf um, with three leaflets on it with the jagged edges and kind of the crinkly leaves. And then they have a white flower. And then obviously when they're fruiting, they have a, a strawberry fruit on them. Uh, and then the raspberries tend to be quite uh, large bushes with spiky, um, they're called kings or stems. Uh, again, with the crinkly leaves and the little raspberries. Um, yeah, absolutely delicious. I'm really glad they grow here. <laughs> and I've seen those um, right behind the library when you're walking along the river, right along Sturgeon River. There's a whole bunch uh -huh. of wild raspberry bushes right along the, really? <laughs> right along the yeah. path. Yeah, yeah, they're delicious. They grow everywhere. Um, I'm sure there's some in the Lot 56. Um, yeah, you can definitely eat them. Just um, take it at your own precaution that they haven't been like fertilized or sort of pesticides or anything. Um, but yeah, I love them. Uh, another really common uh, wildflower group is um, the bean family or the Fabaceae. Um, so these are the, you can find them as a clover, which again is not a single flower, but a collection of many flowers on one head if you look closely. Um, clover or even the weed bird fetch. Um, it has kind of that long stringy vine um, that kind of wraps around stuff and then it produces all those purple flowers. Um, and then the purple flowers are actually similar to, if you look closely, they look a lot like sweet pea flowers, which are obviously in the bean family. Um, beans are really well known for having uh, compound leaves. So they have one leaf made of many leaflets. Um, and also being a, a vining habit, so they have those little vine tendrils that they send out and wrap around other plants. Um, and then, uh, yeah, and then for weeds, um, lots of wildflowers are also considered weeds. But a weed is only a weed when um, you don't like it. And a lot of the time, our weeds uh, just are specialized to um, kind of live in disturbed habitats, like the open soil of your garden. And so they just grow very happily there. That's where they've 
um, kind of evolved to find their niche um, for uh, millions of years, and they just really like our gardens, and so they're not necessarily bad unless they're an invasive species. Creeping um, bellflower, that is, that's an invasive species, correct? Yeah, that's an invasive species. So yeah. if you see that, um, you can definitely rip it out and then just throw it into your garbage. Don't put it in your organics. <laughs> yeah, these are all really pretty flowers. Well, thank you. Um, some of the photos in here are from uh, the Jasper area going on hikes. Um, Alberta's really lucky because we have so many different kind of ecosystems. We have the mountains, and we have the prairies, and then we have the parkland ecotone and the boreal forest. So we get a huge amount of diversity. Um, and the Rocky Mountain uh, wildflowers are really beautiful in my opinion. Um, I think I have a photo of some uh, peat brush in here. Um, mm -hmm. It's Castilla J or something like that. And um, they're really, really common. Um, they come in lots of different colors. I've seen some that are red, some that are white, and then some that are a hybrid between red and white. Um, so it's really cool to kind of see how they interact with each other in a population. Um, and then I also have some pictures of some um, fireweed, the purple one. Um, and they're also, uh, they're called fireweed because they tend to grow up in areas that have uh, recently had wa uh, wildfires go through because um, they prefer an exposed, disturbed habitat. And then they, they grow like crazy there. Um, yeah, and they're really beautiful. And you can often see them on the sides of the roads just because it's an, an open area that they prefer. Um, and then I also had some columbine, the yellow columbine that has the crazy looking petals that kind of go back into these weird tubes. Um, I think it's just a really interesting looking flower. Really cool. Is it related to the columbine that you would have as a perennial? I have no idea. Common names are a little tricky um, yeah. because there are many different things that are called the same common name and then you look at the um, phylogeny and you realize they're not related at all. See? The Alberta Rose, um, it's absolutely beautiful. You can find it lots of different places. I've seen it growing uh, downtown Edmonton in some parks. I've seen it out around the city in different naturalized areas. Um, they smell absolutely beautiful. Um, they're identifiable because they're kind of a pink flower with five petals, and then they grow in a huge bush with um, a compound leaf with usually five leaflets. Um, and bees absolutely love them. They're a great wildflower. They're so pretty. That's so some of these wildflowers can where I know we can find some of them in our backyards, depending on mm -hmm. how much we let our lawn have weeds or other flowers in there. Where else can you find them? Um, like I said, in the other naturalized areas, um, along the sides of roads is a really great place because um, wildflowers uh, often like a lot of sunlight. So anything that's kind of open and exposed. Um, I really like going down to the big lake area. Um, and doing kind of a walk along the boardwalk. Um, there's lots of sunflowers out there. Um, and then, yeah, if you just head out, honestly, any little patch of kind of naturalized area, you can see lots of interesting things. And different times of the year, we'll have different types of flowers coming up. Um, a lot of uh, really beautiful flowers that people don't often think about are, are grasses that actually have spikes of flowers um, that come up. And if you look really closely, you can often see the little purple anthers hanging out, which are the um, pollen-producing uh, organs of the flower. Um, and they can be really beautiful if you kind of get in closely and look at them. Is that what I'm, we're seeing in the picture here, where you have a video of, it looks like grass blowing? Yeah, exactly. I wanted to really emphasize that um, grass can be a beautiful flower in and of itself. Um, yeah, they're gorgeous. I totally agree. Thank you, Tabea. That was very informative. And now we are going to move on to part three of our four-part series, Lichen.